the lottery was instantly put to death. It's amazing what they teach you kids these days, and even more amazing, it doesn't give you all nightmares. But what was the point of the story, Daddy? That some traditions are pretty dumb, I guess. Like leaving a little food on your plate to show your host that you've had plenty. That's just wasteful. I've had plenty. Can we give my vegetables to charity? <laughs> That's funny, son. Seriously, though. Oh, and speaking of lobbies, it's time for our favorite show. On tonight's jury duty, follow the officers of the Toyland County Police Force as they serve up a Klux Chicken Serve It On Demand brand summons to some lucky citizen. Brought to you by the folks at Klux Chicken, home of the Serve It On Demand brand. Hey, Toyland County, that's us kids. You can't get more live than that. Isn't this exciting? Maybe someone we know will get taken in. I hope it's Jenny's family. You made Jenny cry, you creep. Shh, they're up the road right now. Yeah, uh, Toyland Township, about to serve another one. Roger that. I've been a cop for several years now, and the one thing everyone hates, besides being brought up on charges, is being brought in to serve their civic duty as jurors. But I enjoy the force to win a popularity contest, and if I have to pull some punk out of his living room, or haul some slacker in off the street to help drag out the plow of justice, so be it. My goodness, isn't that Dombrowski? He's freaking out. They've got him dead to rights, and he knows it. That poor man. But better him than us, dear. I'll say. Ah, uh, looks like we got a runner. Eh, uh, those aren't running shoes, though. Would you just look at that scumbum scofflaw? Run, Dumbrowski, run! Huh, I've never seen him move so quick without a box of donuts in view. I worked with him on the line back in the day, and he always put more work into getting out of work than the rest of us put into working. Why is he running, Daddy? He's running because he knows that if they catch him, he'll be stuck in a room with a bunch of trolls for weeks at a time at $40 a day. Is that the troll? $40 a day? Not trolls, dear. Trolls. Evil little creatures who love to argue just to argue. But it's true they said those are lawyers. Shh. They've tracked him to our neighborhood. And poor Dombrowski looks like he's going to drop from exhaustion. Oh, I can't bear to look. Avert your eyes, kids. It sickens me that you should have to watch such sloth. Whoa, why is he driving down our street? Honey, did you put up those street numbers like I nagged you to for the past three weeks? Uh, I think oh, so. Oh, God, no. Why? Now they'll know right where to find us. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, I didn't get around to that yet. What? You lazy bum. I'm almost at our target destination. Paper's ready. 1203 Nimby Street. Or is that an eight? Three! 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 three. three. Oh, so you don't want to get involved either, is that it? Man, someone at dispatch has right in handwriting. <sighs> what a relief. This is Magoober at 1203 Nimby Street. We have a summons to be served up on demand. Brought to you by the good old folks at Club Street. Look at Mrs. Magoober wine, kids. Hey, do your duty, you lazy wench. We end tonight's jury duty with a human interest story about a most unusual bird. If you listen to oldies radio like I do, you're probably already familiar with one-hit wonders Kate and the Screamers of Kate's Got the Beat fame. Isn't that the group built around the innate rhythmic sense of a blue and gold macaw, Chet? Kate would be that macaw, Megan, but her timing has changed over the years, and now the band's only other surviving member wants out of his contract. We found this revealing video on the internet. Little Miss Katie can sweep the tea. The song taps in on the tiny feet of a blue and gold macaw. Kate's got the beat. She says hello and what's up on repeat. Sassiest bird that she ever saw. Got a razor sharp wit and a razor sharp jaw. The tendency to bite the way she carries her jaw. Oh, Kate's got the.
What happened? She bit you again? Yeah. I can't play like this, man. You preaching to the choir, boy. How you think I got the nickname Fingerless? What's up? What's up? And that, what's up, went out like years ago. It's dated. But she throws it into every freaking song we do. Is dated? <laughs> you mean like an expiration date on a milk carton? <laughs> I'm telling you, Cleo, she's not even in sync. We're gonna have to change the name of the freaking song from Katie's Got the Beat to Katie's Got a Beat, cause she like might like to rock, okay, but not with us, you dig? In fact, I think we might even want to change the name of the whole freaking band, man. You ain't changing nothing. No tour package is gonna pick up a group doing Kate's Got the Beat if it ain't named Kate and the Screamers, you understand? It sounds like life on the road with Kate must be a living hell. Indeed. When pressed for comment, longtime bandmate, manager, and owner, Cleophus Fingerless Jackson had this to say. Please, dear God, won't somebody please help me? Legend has it the Screamers sold their souls to Satan for a hit, but didn't read the rest of the bargain. They would have to serve as the Till Death Do They Rock backup band to a feathered diva. We've heard from Mr. Jackson, but how do the other founding members feel about having sworn their undying devotion to Kate the Great? They're dead, Megan. It's hard to believe no one wants to take ownership of that bird, Chet. I mean, if I were some schlubby loser who couldn't hold a job but still had to make rent, I would think it well worth my while to become caretaker to such a lovely creature, especially if her royalty payments feathered my nest. Perhaps some animal shelter will take her in. But that's quite a commitment, because birds like that live to be a hundred or so. Is that people years, Chet? That's people years, Megan. And it's a tricky case, as we'll soon see in an upcoming episode of Dr. Lawyer with Judge Sally Smothers, M.D. Should be a good one. Luis, you can have the jelly filling, and Stephen, you can have the rest of it. No, wait a minute. You know what? I'll just take the whole damn dough. There, that settles it, and stop bringing food to my court. Next. Your Honor, Judge Dr. Sally, I would like to turn over ownership of this macaw to Mr. Robert Drippy. Droopy. Droopy. Due to personal bird-inflicted hardships. Don't give me that. You were drunk, and now you're going to be flogged and beaten. Bailiff? Uh, that was the last case, Your Honor. With the deadbeat dad, this is the bird custody dispute. Oh, I see. You two so-called grown men are playing tug-of-war with this innocent creature. Why don't you just saw this beautiful little bird in half? Then maybe prepare her with a little rosemary and sage stuffed with a crusty... Your Honor, please! Get a hold of yourself! Y yeah, Judge. We both want the same thing. Me taking custody of the bird. Yeah, sure, whatever. I find in favor of both of you. Case dismissed. Now get out of my courtroom. You both make me sick. I love it when she says, how are you, my friend? But then she always bites me. That doesn't sound like her. Are you sure she isn't saying, how are you, my friend? What's the difference? The difference is that you added a comma. When she asks, how are you, my friend, that's a way of saying, give me more food now, to prove it. Friend is Kate speak for food, Bob. And she eats a lot of nuts, by the way. What kind? The expensive kind. And make sure you chew them up real good first or she'll spit them right back. <laughs> I see. Well, I found out that she likes to chuckle along to laugh tracks. Does she have any other talent? Sure. She says, ow. Hmm. I haven't heard that one yet. She only does it when she's jabbing you. She really likes to add insult to injury, that bird. Yeah, that's it. She sounds just like that. She also just ruined some antique lacquered oriental dining trays I inherited from my parents. You need to keep something that valuable in a locked white iron cage, Bob. I'm a car-proof cage. 
Oh, no, that's okay. I prefer the kind of TV trays with folding legs. No, I meant Kate. Lock her up. She won't just pick it. Use a combination lock, Bob. And whatever you do, do not tell her that combination. I'll be right with you, Mr. Peabody. I'll be right with you, Mr. Peabody. There. Now it might be safe to throw that preview party. Tad Snyder, I haven't seen you in ages. Let's remedy that. Could you hold on a second? I've got another call on the other line. Hey, Bill. You're not going to believe this, but I think I found the perfect sucker for a surprise roast. Bill? No, it's still me, Tad. Bob. Oh, oopsie poopsie. My bad. Bill? Yeah. I think I just found the perfect sucker for our next roast. Huh. I wonder what he could have meant by that. My grandfather ran the Toyland Country Store for several years until he was run out of business by all Mart. He believed in treating people like persons, and so do I. I'm Robert Droopy, and at my firm, you're not just a case, you're a person. In my office, you will be offered a cup of coffee, and someone will ask you if you've been having a nice day, or that cup is free. Are you shopping for legal representation? Ask yourself, will this firm treat me like a person? Will they care about my feelings? Do they provide reasonably priced or better yet free coffee? If they can't answer yes to all of those questions, you need the legal services of Robert Droopy. Yes, if I lose, you will still have to pay, but you get to keep this handsome, full-color, commemorative keepsake of your case free of charge. My grandfather would be so proud. The Law Offices of Robert Droopy. Payment due up front. Bob, what does your grandfather have to do with anything? Well... Now let me get this straight, Bob. You think you're qualified at trying your hand at law? Well, I still have a few classes to take before I finish my bachelor's in communications, but... Yeah? Well then, gee, what law school wouldn't love to have you? You think I might be onto something? No, I think you might be on something, period. Trust me, Bob. The law is just one more thing you would thoroughly suck at. Yeah, you know that TV is not the same as real life, right, Bob? What? Come on, Bob. It takes years of school and a lot of money to pass the bar, and then you spend the rest of your life helping dirtbags pass the buck. Do you think you have the temperament for that? All I'm saying is that sometimes you get a little irritable. You know, like a bowel syndrome. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm going to use that. No, you can't. It's mine. Too late. Already wrote it down. Why would he be writing that down? Oh, we're salesmen, Bob. You never know when we might need a good irritable bowel syndrome joke. Advertising, huh? I could have used your talents last year when I opened my private detective agency. Wasn't that same car at the drive-in? Do you think we were followed? I think I've seen that guy on TV. I did what I could to promote myself, but got nowhere. Damn this economy. It takes more than trench coats and patience to be a private eye, Bob. Or else any old boob could do it. If I'm such a boob, would the Toyland Board of Fellows have sent me this commendation? Now, you gentlemen must excuse me while I visit the little boy's room. A commendation? You're on the board. Do you know anything about this? <laughs> Keep reading. Bob apparently didn't. Presented not with honor, but humor to the scoffable Robert Droopy for being such a mental midget. Or do you folks prefer to be called mental little people these days? We were going to send him an honorary doctorate in fartology from the University of Flatulence. I thought better of it. That shows a good heart. Not really. We just figured even Bob would notice something so obvious. Do you think he'd notice if I borrowed this for the roast? 
I like that frame. So I see you've noticed and are admiring my commendation from the Toyland Board of Fellows. <laughs> you mean the one you pointed out before you left to take a dump? Yeah, Bob. We noticed. Are you making fun of me? Oh, come on, Bob. Use your brain. This award isn't real. Read the fine print. It's like the Chinese restaurant downtown posting its welcome letter from the Chamber of Commerce. No one wants to point out that it's a joke piece of paper because they might toss it out. And then, what will we have to amuse ourselves with while choking down chow mein? That this was just a poke at me? I'm just a joke to you? Nobody's saying you're a bob, boob. I mean that you're a boob. You don't take a joke very well. How is the world supposed to laugh at you when you can't laugh at yourself? That's from the Proverbs. It's like you always say, Bob, I can't win for losing. But I've never said, I can't win for losing in my life. Too late? I can't win for losing. You just did. Awesome. You know, I think I can make a ringtone out of that. All right, that's it. Out of my house. You seem to be taking this case a little too personally, Lieutenant. Bob's just a low-level racketeer. He never spit in your cornflakes. He's a murderalizer of women and orphans. And Bob's gonna burn in hell, even if I have to burn my own gasoline. Now what? I thought I told you... Ooh, oh, almost forgot. Map to your roast. Uh, Doom, uh, party. Oh, right. Thanks. Hi, Eric. There's no Eric here, Kay. Hi, Eric. Once again, my name is Bob, not Eric. Eric. I took the time to learn your name. Eric. Please learn mine. Bob. Eric. Bob. Eric. Eric. Oh, you, well, at least you're only an echo. It's not like you say things just to be spiteful like some guys I know. Bob's gonna burn in hell, even if I have to brew my own gasoline. Finally, you learned my name. Hey, wait a minute. A roast? Oh, it all seems so clear now. Hey, nice box, Bob. Yeah, what you got in the box, Bob? Are those air holes? Those look like air holes. Furlan, you, you demand. demand. What's in the box, Bob? Oh, you'll find out soon enough, my quote, unquote, friends. Hey, ain't you the guest of honor? Yes? Would you mind reading over this intro I wrote? They asked me to MC. I ain't never done no roast before. A roast? Indeed, yes. I'll have a look at that speech of yours. <clears throat> I hate to hint we're planning to show Bob a hot time in the old town tonight, but let's just say we done contacted Mr. Fuad Ramses, that caterer fella seen on the news, and tonight's ancient Egyptian blood feast is a gonna have a special ingredient, Bob himself. Oh my God! Yep, it's pretty funny stuff. I kind of decided to go with the barbecue metaphor because of the I'm a good old boy, you know? Say, where are y'all from? Far be it from us to stew Bob in his own juices because we all know he's a little tough to digest? Incredible. This is downright Swiftian. An immodest proposal. Why, thanks. Thank you kindly, Bob. It's so lovely to have you for dinner, Bob. Evening. I was just running my introduction by Bob here. Oh yeah, good idea. Less chance of him bursting into tears in the middle of dinner, right? Say, what kind of name is Droopy? That might give me something to work with. That does it. You don't fool me. Hey, that's a gun. It was my grandfather's, you murderous scoundrels. The perfect sucker, huh? Now who's the sucker? Okay, so you're a big man with a gun. Are you finally going to show us what's in that box? Say, is that a beak? That's right, you fiends. The beak of justice. Go ahead, Katie Kins. Tell him what you told me last night. 
No, not that. The other thing. Well, what she said was, Bobby's going to burn in hell. Even if I have to brew my own gasoline. Uh huh. Does your bird watch the late show, Bob? Well, yeah. Why? Because that dialogue straight out of my trigger finger bleeds. Sure it is. Kate overheard your plans to roast me alive, and now that I've gotten wise, you're trying to kid your way out of it. Because the wife and I had it engraved in our wedding rings. See? Oh, yeah. I guess it does. Bob, you do understand this was to have been a purely figurative grilling, right? Yeah, sure, kid. It was all in fun. Oh, so you jerks can say whatever you want as long as you wink afterward, is that it? You ad guys, not only live by your own laws, but you write them too, huh? Actually, Bob, I'm not only a copywriter, but a lawyer. Yeah, you could learn a lot from this man, Bob. Bill's the reason Cluck's Chicken had to make public their secret special recipe for awesome sauce. Turns out they thought they could put anything they wanted in it, no matter how disgusting. That was you? I couldn't do drive through for days. Okay, so you weren't really planning to roast me. I'll give you that, but you kept bringing up my upbringing. I figured you were planning a hate crime or something. No, Bobby. Oh, hell, boy. Does this club look restricted to you? We're Republicans, Bob, not cannibals. And we don't burn Jews at the stake anymore in Toyland. What? But I'm not Jewish. Huh. I thought you said you was a lawyer. I seen it on TV. Pick to the point of peaking. This camera is creeping. And I'm speaking, this seeking that unspeakable gleam in your eye. I wrote to this site. And fell back upon it I would like to use Sweet secret surprise Each sunrise And I would be your inspiration Be my baby and kind But you never can No, I dread the hopes and dreams So I'll never be entwined Although I feel what we might find Glasses looking back and through the, the in the back of my head, I heard a piece of your 